The three ring circus known as the National Program Invitational has packed up and left Lake Point Sports with the memories, Phil Kerber. Those last forever. I'm Corey McCartney, joined by the aforementioned PBR Georgia Scouting Director as we take three cuts on one of the biggest, baddest events of the summer. Phil, how are you? Oh, I'm doing well. I'm uh, recovering a bit from the weekend because, uh, like you said, there were a lot of memories created there. Uh, MPI, I mean, just a parade of stars. It was Canes National that claimed both the 17U and 15U titles. Uh, USA Prime National took the 16U division and Knights Nation uh, in 14U. Watching the pass go that these teams had to take those titles, I mean, number one, how impressive was, the, were, was this field? And how impressive were those teams that ended up winning the titles? Yeah, anybody that comes away from this event calling themselves a champion, they have to run the gauntlet. There's, there were no easy games in this tournament at all in any age group, so all these teams were tested, and they had to prove that they were the best. I started with the 17 U Canes National. They took down Team Elite 9-8 to eight in a game that was one of the more exciting games that we've had at this park over the three years I've been here. You know, Canes got – uh, we get a three or four run lead. Team Elite would come back, cut it to one. Canes come back and score a few, you know, increase that lead to three. And Team Elite was always just coming back and coming back and putting pressure on the Canes. But Canes were able to withhold the pressure. You know, they've got an incredibly deep pitching staff that certainly helps in a tournament like this. And they were able to uh, hold on and beat Team Elite 9 8. And then 16 U, USA Prime Financial, that team was absolutely loaded. I mean, I could spend an entire segment of this just breaking down that roster. And I, I'll save people all the time for me doing that, but they they took care of business against building champions 12 to two. And the 15 you won, which I, I'm no offense to the Titans when I say this, but it, one of the most surprising runs that we've had at the MPI with the Titans 15 U team making it all the way to the championship. And then a marathon four hour and 19 minute championship against Canes National. <laughs> Haynes National prevailing 20 to 12, but hats off to that Titans team for doing what they did. I mean, you know, going into this tournament, looking at their pool, I wouldn't have expected them to be first place team out of it, but they took care of business and they just kept pulling off the wins in bracket play. I mean, it was a lot of fun to watch them just keep progressing and then, you know, putting up that fight against Canes. There was a point in that game where it could have been a run rule, but Titans did not quit and they put up, you know, a bunch of runs to extend that game and keep things going. So hats off to both those teams. And then 14U, which was, you know, really a matchup of the future stars in uh, the Southeast, Louisiana Knights against Team Elite. Uh, Knights taking that one 10 to 5, but boy, there are some players on both those teams that are going to be fun to watch over the next couple of years. So let's talk upperclassmen. Uh, USA Prime National, you mentioned that roster. Nick Sanders, a Texas commit, uh, had some of the best moments with some tape measure home runs. Uh, but who was it among those upperclassmen that stood out to you? Yeah, the guy that I have uh, the uh, image etched in my mind is Roman Anthony. That walk-off homer that he hit in the semifinals against Knights Platinum has to be the moment of the tournament. I mean, you're down, I think it was six to five, bottom of the seventh, man on. I think there might have even been two outs. And from my, where I was, And he hits it, and I'm watching him. I got all on video, and I'm like, okay, he's looking at it. It looks like it might be foul, and then you see him drop the bat and just keep walking and give a look into the crowd. Like, yeah, that ball's gone. That's a walk off. And I mean, that was one of the most exciting moments we've had at this event. And Roman Anthony had an incredible, incredible weekend. If you go look on our, you know, my Twitter, Shooter, Hunt, Nathan Rohde, uh, our PBR Georgia, we've got tons of video on him just barreling baseballs up, doubles, home runs, extra base hits. He was on fire and just incredible player to watch. We know you love talking arms and Kane 15 U's Carson Messina, South Carolina commit, had the highest velocity of any under, uh, underclassman at 92 mile per hour. Uh, did he make your cut of the underclassman that stood out to you? Uh, he just missed it. I had a couple other guys and I'm going to start to correct you here, but I think some of our guys might have not updated some velos yet. Because I got on my list, Cal Randall, 2023 UCLA commit, who came out on Sunday. He pitched twice in the event, came out Sunday during that championship game and was tossing 93-94. Just there, there's some electricity in that arm. I mean, it is loose, it is whippy, and he comes right at you. I mean, that kid 
that was one where, you know, you're looking around like, holy cow, this is actually happening, just the way everything works in the velo. And then you got Aiden Miller, Arkansas commit, top tier ruse, who every time he comes here, it's like, I'm watching every single one of those games and I'm filming anything he does because they're you don't know what's going to happen, but when something happens, it's a, it's big, it's loud, it's powerful. I mean, he was running his fastball up to 94, 95 uh, during the event and swings a big stick too. He's just, he's an electric player to watch. Basically any of these guys I'm about to name, electric fits their, uh, their gameplay. Max Clark, who might be the definition of, you know, an electric factory. The kid hits, hits, hits from the left side, you know, throws low 90s, can run, can really do it all. He's tooled up about as well as any player in the country. And then he fanned it, commits. I mean, really, really fun player to watch. And then I'm going to end it all off with a 14 new guy, Connor Griffin from Louisiana Knights. If you don't know the name, you should. Uh, he was up to 90 on the mound. And I'll repeat, he's a 14 new up to 90. And that's not, that might not even be the most impressive thing. His swimming is what really is going to really draws your eyes. It's such a good frame, you know, 6'2", 6'3". Looks like he's a lean, lanky kid, so there's going to be a ton of filling out to do. But when he swings that bat, you know, there's some uh, bad intentions in there, and he's going to hit some balls real far. Well, with MPI in the books, we'll turn our attention to the PBR Classic, which begins Thursday at the Baseball Village. And Phil Kerber, Phil Kerber will have you covered for all of it, so make sure you're following him at Phil Kerber PBR on Twitter and follow PBR Georgia while you're at it. Phil, thank you so much, and enjoy the baseball week. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, that's what I get for going off of the.